Last year, Zwift Academy opened its doors, launching a groundbreaking worldwide talent search to find the next pro rider for Canyon SRAM racing. The competition exceeded all expectation. Over 1,200 women from 51 countries signed up to take the challenge in Zwift. In a truly grand finale, on the island of Majorca at Canyon SRAM's training camp, Leah Thorvalson of Little Rock, Arkansas, was crowned 2016 Zwift Academy champion and the newest member of Canyon SRAM Racing. This year, it could be you. Oh wow, I could have a shot at a pro contract, but it's for anyone. It's a huge step forward in your own fitness, and so it's, it's not all just about the one person who's gonna get a pro contract. It's a win for everyone who's involved. Zwift Academy is this great program where Zwift is trying to get the women more involved. It's just this huge, to me, a great community. There's women coming up going, I get how this could fit into my life. What I think is so nice about Swift Academy, I really think that it was um, inspiring lots of women to, to take part in this adventure. Maybe they've gone far beyond their own expectations. How far I got in Swift, um, there were 1,200 females that joined and um, there were 100 females that finished Swift and I can't believe I, I was one of them. Yes, it's hard. Come on, you can do it. You know, just do your best. Because it's not just the physical side, it's the determination and to boost your confidence in anything else you do, not just cycling. Find out how strong you really are. Find new friends from around the world. Find out if you have what it takes to go pro. Do not wait, just follow your dreams. Be the best cyclist you can be. Head over to academy.zwift.com to find out more and sign up today. When I started on Zwift, kids were, they were so excited. They're coming and watching. What's mommy doing? Look, she's on the screen. That's mommy. Which one? The one in that t-shirt. So they were really excited. No, no. There's a yellow fish. Can you see the yellow fish? Oh, can you see? I didn't do any riding outside. I didn't do any competitions. I hardly, you know, I've never been on a road bike outside on the road. And only then, once I got the confidence on the turbo trainer, that I got some power in my legs and I feel confident on the road bike, then I went outside. Joining the Zwift Academy will get me to do that number of exercises in a certain time for me to be able to then, yeah, I can sign up to do the triathlon. I signed for a few triathlons. I started first duathlon and then I did three local triathlons. And you progress because you keep cycling on Zwift and you get better and better, so that will reflect in your outside ride. It's like cycling outside, but not having to concentrate on the cars, on the wind and the temperature. You controlling that yourself. Sometimes you think you sign for things and then you go, oh, you get bored of it and you never finish things. But I think having the goal of 
with everyone else to finish something and you see their progress, your progress, just people encourage each other and they go, yes, it's hard, but come on, you can do it, you know, just do your best. Because it's not just the physical side to boost your confidence in anything else you do, not just cycling. You love it. I love it. <laughs>
and the uh, the winning um, basically there's no kind of a winning prize for winning the series but what there is is there's going to be a uh, prize draw if you complete all uh, 10 races uh, all 10 rides and you will um, be into a draw to win one wahoo kicker or one wahoo snap or also you can p possibly win a wahoo Alt Elements Bolts as well. So those are three prizes up for grabs. Uh, so today we are live on, uh, we are live on uh, um, Facebook Live, uh, Zwift Community Live um, on Facebook. We are live on Mixer. We are live on also uh, Twitch and YouTube. So the riders here, they'll be taking it probably quite easy. We won't really see any attacks at the front uh, for quite a while until we hit the mountain slopes. We do see a little bit of a breakaway group up here. A lot of riders coming out of uh, J uh, Japan. We've got T Nodo, we've got O Jones out of uh, New Zealand, I think that is, and uh, S Whitford out of uh, Australia, as well as uh, also we've got on the right here, we recognize uh, from last time for coming out of Brazil. Uh, we've got uh, Ardorno as well um, for the Tour de Ardorno. So this rider's here, they're trying to make a little bit of a breakaway group, it looks like, uh, just off the front um, of these guys uh, and girls just behind them who are chasing on. But it looks like this group is going to all come together um, just before we hit the mountain pass. So we can see a good, big, good group here. I reckon there's probably about, uh, probably about 30, 40 riders in here. So let's tell you a little bit more about what is going to be going on in this race today. So these riders uh, are going to be heading up the uh, Watopia Mountain 8 course. And we'll bring up this little visual here so um they'll be starting uh, just around the top of the actual uh, map there you can see uh, it's a little bit small but you guys will be able to see it there and we'll wind our way through ocean boulevard which is where we are now before we head up to the uh, spruce goose across the uh, wickedy wooden bridge uh, and then we'll head up the reverse mountain KOM climb that'll take us up to the tower and these riders will be climbing up the radio tower today which hits a maximum gradient of 19% so if these riders are on smart uh, trainers uh, such as the Wahoo uh, Kicker and the Wahoo Kicker Snap they'll be feeling those gradients as they hit up that 19% climb they'll head, head, down the, head down the tower climb down the Ford KOM before they turn and swing left onto uh, Ocean Boulevard again where they just are and then they'll turn right up towards the uh, um, up towards the S's through the sprint and uh, out to the finish of the course so here we've got a good group of riders it looks like a good about 30 40 riders uh, heading out onto this mountain course so uh, we usually do see some riders turn left up here if they were going to be doing the pretzel course or the mountain course but they're going to be going straight on there's also a different there's two different categories in this race uh, today you've got the a category uh, and also the c category now the riders are out there they can switch between categories uh, between different uh, stages they don't need to stay in the same one because it's more of a kind of a tour uh, rally type uh, kind of events rather than a full-on race um, and uh, uh, there are some uh, live results being produced uh, by ZwiftPower.com to benefit uh, the broadcast however um, there aren't um, as much as I'm aware there aren't going to be any um, full-on um, uh, combined results uh, provided by ZwiftPower.com that may be confirmed later on so um, you did see um, uh, these group of riders come up and this is where we will see the first uh, little bits of uh, efforts coming in uh, as you see the riders kick into uh, four five six uh, almost six watts per kilogram coming from a uh, t node up here who's actually out on a uh, z power uh, so not on a wahoo kicker or snap as we do see b parry also pushing out of z power ahead of this group into the front group maybe trying to get a little bit of a break uh, before we uh, head into the mountains a little bit of an uh, effort as we see uh, s fleming here from team type one a team that has been uh, created out on Zwift uh, to support um, and raise awareness of uh, type 1 diabetes as well. So we'll give uh, Scott uh, Fleming a ride on there. And uh, you might be wondering what a ride on is. So we'll see in just a second. We'll see that thumbs up coming down onto... Uh, Onto S Fleming there, so uh, that is a uh, kind of like a little um, uh, you know good job, uh, well done, you know uh, kind of uh, kind of um, uh, feeling you can give to these riders when you're out there watching or riding with them, and it lets you know that you're watching them and going to give them support. As we do see the arrows coming out onto these riders now, as they are indicating they're going to be turning left up towards the mountain, and we'll try and give you guys a bit of a view. We'll see if we can uh, drop into a. Uh, uh, aerial views we do see the riders passing through the wind windmills right here and then they return left up towards uh, the uh, past the spruce goose over this bridge and you see uh, just in the background on the uh, top of the uh, course um, uh, you can not quite see it just now but there is a big uh, cable stay bridge up there and that is where the riders will be heading but not before they actually head up into the mountains right up here and you can see this is where they're going to be going up these uh, snowy peaks and we're heading right up there Lots of efforts, lots of sweat going to be coming out from these riders as we do see S flaming off the front on the on that Tron bike here. 
And uh, speaking of a Tron bike, so the Tron, or also uh, the uh, official name is the Zwift Concept Bike out on Zwift. Um, it is a, uh, a bike that you actually achieve uh, by doing a climbing achievement uh, in the game. Uh, once you've completed, uh, basically you complete an Everest challenge where you unlock the Trek Imonda. Um, but then you think, you know, I want to get this next bike. Let's head up into the stars, everyone. And then we can actually unlock this uh, Zwift Concept bike, which we do see uh, S. Fleming on here. And that is a bike which you got to complete 50,000 meters of vertical climbing. So um, these riders here, this 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram that uh, he's putting out, that is a real effort. That is not a, um, a fake effort he is putting out. He is going to be on a smart trainer. Uh, he's in a power meter, so we do see a little bit of a break going off the front here. Um, and he's going to be putting out, uh, putting some actual effort out on his pedals, and to give you guys a little bit of a, as we do keep an eye on these riders, to give you guys a little bit of a uh, idea of what um, what sort of equipment these guys are on. I'll put on this little bit of a, uh, a scene here. So if I switch over to this uh, little bit here, you can see that uh, just over here we've got a Wahoo kicker and uh, we've got a bike. And basically what happens here is that the riders will be taking their rear wheel off the bike, hooking it onto the uh, Wahoo kicker there. And you can see that uh, there's some uh, gears on there which the chain will connect onto. And we've also got the pedals and uh, they'll be pushing the pedals around as hard as they can. And that'll be driving that kicker. And then the computer and the game will be reporting to that uh, we're reporting to that actual uh, uh, bit, that big bit of equipment there, that Wahoo kicker, and that'll then give them uh, the feedback that they need and uh, measure their power out in games. We do see M Poly here pushing some uh, pretty big numbers going into six watts per kilogram, seven watts per kilogram up off the front there, as we do see the riders coming right down. Uh, up into the hills here and they have got a bit of a climb before they pass over this uh, concrete bridge this concrete art bridge just here and then they'll head right up into the mountains we can see this uh, beautiful arch bridge right here uh, absolutely elegant uh, structure there and they will be heading over that before they head up into the mountains as we swing around to the left here keeping our eye on Empoli and uh, this front group here of uh, D. Norner, T. Noda, B. Hickson, O. Jones and S. Fleming as well. We can see the mountains and they're going to be heading right up into here. So this is sort of effort they're going to be putting out. As we do see uh, Jeffrey Creel from Vision Cycling there putting in a bit of an effort. He's got on the wheels. We do see S. Whitford also putting in some effort. And uh, S. Fleming as well going to be going in. Jeffrey Creel wants to really get onto this group here. Because this is a front group that looks like he's going to be able to sit with and uh, pull themselves up the hill as well. So here we go, we've got a nice little view of these riders passing over here and we will get a little overhead shot there of uh, Jeffrey Creel. So we've also got a group of uh, 10 riders in this front group. Uh, we've got Tino, Jay Harden, uh, S. Whitford, O. Jones, Jay Flores, uh, coming, out, coming out of uh, Australia. We've got S. Ikbi coming out of Japan, M. Pauli, Scott Cunningham, F. Fonske Tor from coming out of uh, uh, Brazil and also uh, M. Johnson as well. Um, basically, you can also uh, get some uh, information about what the sort of efforts these riders are putting out by going to uh, ZwiftPower.com. It is a, a great tool um, which the community has been providing um, coming out of uh, Glenn Knight, James Hodges and Christian Weidman, uh, the three main guys um, who have been putting out um, this sort of effort. Uh, to produce these sort of resources uh, for us. And you see these sort of uh, resources out on other games um, uh, as well. Um, like There's a similar sort of resource for um, games like EVE, um, EVE Online as well, where you can get uh, live updates um, from the API um, about uh, what sort of um, kills have been going on in the game. And that's a similar sort of thing that's going out in Zwift here. We can actually get some live information about these riders and we can get the history of uh, the efforts they've been putting in. So if I have a little scroll down and I look at uh, Jeffrey Creel here, um, I can pull out that um, he has... Um, he did uh, win the uh, first um, the first edition of uh, the Tour de Oz. Uh, came um, great sprint right at the end, um, and then recently he has also uh, competed. He got a bronze uh, third place in uh, stage three of the Tour de Oz as well, um, and he also got first place in the XOS uh, ZTR Tuesday Night Worlds. And he's been quite uh, pretty uh, some pretty impressive efforts out there actually uh, on course. So um, you know, huge ride on. We'll give him. Uh, We'll give uh, Jeffrey Creel a bit of a ride on as well there because there's some uh, impressive efforts he's been putting on. But this uh, group have got a little bit of an achievement there, guys, uh, for giving uh, three ride-ons in game in one session. So, um, yeah, good job for me just there. But we've got these riders going off front here. And it looks like T. Noda off the front in as, uh, using Z Power. So, um, good effort for him. He's out there in Z Power. Maybe he doesn't have a smart trainer or power meter. So, uh, but then this is the whole benefit of doing this sort of event um, where you can actually win uh, a Wahoo Kicker by taking part. Um, so, um, you know, huge jobs to him as well. 
So let's just take a little bit more uh, information about what's been going on in this broadcast today. So today we're going to be doing this uh, full broadcast. It's 31.6 uh, kilometers. If you guys want to take part, you can uh, also chat and put some comments out in uh, Mixer, Twitch, and also Facebook. I do see that we've got also uh, BJ Alfonso from Team, P Team PTZ out there. Uh, always great to see BJ um, out supporting the broadcast. Um, and we've also uh, got uh, also got Nathan Gera there taking care of everyone over in Mixer. And a huge hello to everyone over in Mixer on the front page. And also, if you guys are watching on uh, the Xbox dashboard as well. Um, and uh, if you want to uh, send us some uh, tweets, you can do so. Um, we have got... Um, uh, you can send us some tweets to at Z Community Live. Um, you can send photos and comments. If you guys are actually uh, riding out there on the, in the Tour de Oz at the moment, you can maybe send us a little bit of photo as you're recovering on the downhill on the, uh, the downhill of the mountain and uh, let us know how you're actually uh, getting on. And uh, we can actually bring those up uh, within our actual broadcast as well. Um, I can give you a little bit of an example here. Um, as we can see, uh, here's a, a tweet that has come out uh, from Ashley Bergstrom, uh, Zuzkana, who will be actually out riding um, on the Zwift Community Live uh, channel, the channel you're watching just now. She'll be riding out there later on doing a workout. Um, so if you want to stick around uh, if in another four more hours um, after this broadcast, uh, Zuzkana will be riding out there as well, uh, showing us uh, the sort of effort she's got as she is gearing up to the Zwift Academy out on Zwift. So, returning back to the racing now, we can get a good look at how all these riders are getting on. T-Noda is off the front, uh, but we'll drop back and have a look at some of the guys who are putting out the efforts on the, the, uh, on the smart trainers, as it looks like the first uh, four riders we can, uh, first two riders we can discount from this, as we do see O Jones is off the front as well. Uh, let's take a little bit of an info, take a little, get a little bit of info about O Jones um, and see uh, who he actually is in the community. This is uh, Ollie Jones coming out of New Zealand. He's done 25 races out on Zwift. Uh, it looks like he does a lot of, he's done the uh, Wahoo Tour de, um, Tour de Oz, it looks like this is only his uh, first one, but he is actually competing in the uh, Kiss Australia East Ecrit series, um, a great uh, series that is coming out of uh, Zwift. Um, basically, um, it, the Ecrit series is um, an event which uh, these riders are going to be racing um, over, it's starting in April, it's going all the way to September, and um, they will be um, competing, winning races, gathering points and basically the top nine riders uh, from the east and uh, the uh, I think it's uh, so many from the east and so many from the west uh, combined will be um, out uh, uh, winning points and uh, they'll be selected to go through uh, to um, they'll be selected to go through to a live final uh, which is going to happen uh, sometime uh, in I think it's in the middle of September and it is going to be um, uh, a live final with another wild card entry as well. Um, and we hope to bring you some uh, broadcasts of that there. As we do see El Brody coming out of the United States, pushing really hard off the front. And we'll drop down to uh, O Jones as well on the uh, parameters. We do see these riders are sitting right on his wheel there. Jeffrey Creel is sitting there, tucks down very nicely and uh, head bobbing around there. Trying to keep on to O Jones as he is the rider he's going to keep as his man out on course. So let's give you guys a bit more of a view because I think we've got a better view now of where these guys are heading. And here we go. Look at these switchbacks, everyone. These switchbacks are where these riders are be climbing up currently. They're just sitting around here. Jeffrey Creel and uh, B. Hicks and O. Jones have just headed up into uh, this little bit of snowy patch before they head right round another switchback. And then this is when they get to about 300 meters in this uh, top corner, just where you see A, the A symbol, watching uh, um, watching uh, J. Creel. That is about 300 meters. And they've still got another... I think it's another 240 meters before they get right to the top to the tower climb. So uh, they've got a long way to go, and they are feeling that effort in the legs. I do see what Tommy, Tommy boy, uh, 13. Uh, look at my bro. Uh, how's it going, Tommy? If your bro is racing there, let us know. He bro is, and we'll give him a ride on. Um, and here we go. So we've got Jeffrey Kill there, and we'll drop a little bit further back because we do see. I do see Aaron Dunn out there coming from WP Taz. Uh, Wolfpack Tasmania. Uh, he's a rider who's currently leading uh, the uh, Kiss Australia E-Crit series. So a rider that at the moment uh, he looks very certain to be uh, going out to that final out on Zwift um, in uh, Australia if he does keep up the way he's going, which I've got no doubt he can be doing. Uh, he actually did send us a few uh, tweets in uh, not so long ago about the broadcasts and uh, as he was racing. I'm going to see if I can actually scan back and find those for you to give you an idea of what uh, this guy is actually uh, putting out in terms of his effort. Um, maybe I have to go a little bit too far back. Here we go. So this is uh, Aaron uh, Dunn here. This rider we were looking at just now. Uh, you can see he is. Uh, this is sort. Of, this is maybe this. This could possibly be what his face looks like right now. Uh, putting out this sort of effort, sweating hard as we do see. Is putting out uh, five, six watts per kilogram. 
coming up that um, coming up that mountain there, heading into the uh, heading up into the right into the hills. Um, you know, these guys. Uh, one of the benefits of not climbing so high is that they won't be feeling the uh, altitude uh, change. So uh, hopefully, get some nice fast speeds up there. But he is currently nine seconds behind Jeffrey Creel. Um, and uh, he's still sat on that wheel of Ojo, and so uh, I think we might see uh, these two riders fighting out. Hopefully, uh, Aaron will be able to catch up to these guys, uh, as long with a few of these other riders here that we do like to see, like uh, Scott Cunningham as well, and uh, Jeff Rooney as well, or Jeff Rooney from Team Experimental. We'll give him a ride on as well. So. If anyone has any questions about what is going to go on in this event, uh, anyone got any predictions, uh, let us know out in chat. Um, uh, send us uh, tweets on Facebook and we will uh, bring those in and uh, let you know. As we do see, we've got a, uh, a come on, let's go, Jeffrey, coming from uh, Timothy Termont as well over on Facebook. Uh, so uh, a great uh, great support there from uh, Jeffrey's uh, fellow uh, team, um, team rider. Um, we've got some more as well here coming out of... Uh, <laughs> Coming out of uh, Damien John Hansen, let's go Team ADHR, the Aussie Hump Day Ride. Uh, BJ Fonzo also bringing in some messages here. Nathan is looking for Zwift secrets at HQ. Uh, Nathan's actually, I think he's back now from Zwift HQ. I think he's probably sat in a uh, Uber or something coming back from that, uh, um, coming back from what he was doing over there. There was a, a few of a little, um, little hints at what might be coming from Zwift Community Live as well out there um if you guys uh, head over to our twitter and our instagram you might get a little bit of a hint about what we might be bringing you uh, uh in collaboration with uh, swift and a few others um in the future to the uh, broadcast channel so let's head back to the racing action as we do see that these guys are getting uh, some pretty uh, the gaps are starting to extend as we do see uh, jeffrey kill now um on o jones he's now going to be pacing up behind uh, B. Hickson as well. So these three riders are all sitting quite nicely together in that group as we do see them passing right through that uh, snowy uh, little channel there. But they've still got so far to go, guys. It's a hard effort here. And you get right to the top and you'll see when these guys get right to the top of the hill. They've still got another 100 meters of climbing to go. So it's not going to be easy on them whatsoever. So let's have a little look back at what these guys will be doing. The course here is going to be coming out from Watopia, they're going to be turning right. They've, got, they've gone down Ocean Boulevard and they've turned left into the hills. And basically, they're going right up here. And this little switchback back right there, that's when they're going up into the mountain, up into the tower. And they come back down and they swing left and then they go up into the S's. So uh, we expect to see uh, something happen pretty soon before there. And um, before these guys uh, go into any further, we'll bring you a little bit of a um, uh, video we've got um, coming out of Zwift Academy for you guys and gals who are out there who are interested. Um, there is actually an opportunity. Um, for you, if you uh, if you're a female and you want to uh, basically uh, push your cycling efforts um, further uh, from beyond Zwift, um, we do actually have the uh, Zwift Academy um, for women's uh, with uh, uh, Canyon Sram Racing, where you can actually uh, win a place uh, by doing a uh, rides, uh, workouts, and uh, races uh, this year. And in the winter, you can go out to a training camp with a uh, women's world tour professional cycling team, and you can win a place out there to ride with them for the 2018, 2018 season. So I'll bring you that little bit of a uh, video just now. Uh, the next the one that just released a couple of days, days ago from Sonia Weidman. Uh, and you can find out a little bit more about uh, how it, the first year 2017 affected her and uh, the benefits that she gained. When I started on Zwift, kids were, they were so excited. They're coming and watching. What's mommy doing? Look, she's on the screen. That's mommy. Which one? The one in that t-shirt. So they were really excited. No, no. There's a yellow fish. Can you see the yellow fish? Oh! Can you see? Okay. I didn't do any riding outside. I didn't do any competitions. I hardly, you know, I've never been on a road bike outside on the road. And only then once I got the confidence on the turbo trainer that I got some power in my legs and I feel confident on the road bike, then I went outside. Joining the Zwift Academy will get me to do that number of exercises in a certain time for me to be able to then yeah, I can sign up to do the triathlon. I signed for a few triathlons. I started first duathlon, and then I did three local triathlons. And you progress because you keep cycling on Zwift, and you get better and better, so that will reflect in your outside ride. It's like cycling outside, but not having to concentrate 
on the cars, on the wind and the temperature. You controlling that yourself. Sometimes you think you sign for things and then you go, oh, you get bored of it and you never finish things. But I think having the goal of with everyone else to finish something and you see their progress, your progress, just people encourage each other and they go, yes, it's hard. Come on, you can do it, you know, just do your best. Because it's not just the physical side to boost your confidence in anything else you do, not just cycling. You love it. I love it. <laughs> there we go. So that was the uh, the latest uh, Zwift Academy update uh, from uh, Sonia Weidman, one of the women who uh, completed uh, the, all the challenges that they had to do uh, last year. Um, and then basically push through to the final. Um, there was a, I think it was like what, I think it was 1,200 uh, women that took part, um, and uh, only I think it was only about 120 actually completed all the tasks that they had to do, uh, which then whittled down to 12 uh, semi finalists, and then down to three who actually f uh, got reached the final, who went out to a uh, train with Canyon Stram and Mallorca. So. A bit earlier on there, uh, just when we were doing that video, we did see a little bit of uh, an effort from M. Polly trying to get back onto this group of uh, B. Hicks and O. Jones and Jeffrey Creel, but unfortunately he did not get the effort in just there he needed to do, and he dropped off the back of that group. But we do see Jeffrey Creel now dropping a little bit, getting a little bit gapped there from B. Hicks and O. Jones. So um, as he looks like he's going to maybe just get on top from here. So now we're going to see what's going to happen here. Are these riders here at the front, are they going to push over and uh, get an even, even bigger gap as we head up into the climb? So now they're going to be swinging left, and we'll give you try and get a bit of an overhead view right here to see what they're going to be going up. Okay, so we can't quite see it here, but just uh, you see that little left-hand turn off there. They're going to be heading up that ice track just there to uh, get right up into uh, the tower climb, as we'll do see. Here we go. The riders are now going up, and you see Jeffrey Creel, the view that he has got there, um, and that is the tower climb up there. They're going to be heading up, and we'll pull forward to a, a head-on view from Jeffrey there. So that's what he's, he's going to be looking at. He's going to see that there pushing right up they're going into 13 percent climbing effort here you've seen the top right corner of the screen we've got 13 percent on that blue element that is that is the gradient that they're going to be feeling if he's on their wahoo kicker um, and this sort of effort he's putting out there 400 watts at the moment uh, 164 beats per minute uh, mr too nice wit it uh, this is swift it's a uh, virtual cycling uh, game uh, where you can hook up your real bikes uh, to uh, bike trainers uh, yeah i'll give you a little shot so you can see actually what this is um, so this little uh, bit here, uh, this is actually uh, this is uh, what these guys are going to be on, uh, something like this, like this Wahoo Kicker, they put a bike onto that and then they, their back wheel drives that, uh, they it basically communicates with the software and uh, then they're going to be riding out here, so this rider, uh, Jeffrey Creel, coming out of Australia, is actually uh, riding out there, putting in some huge efforts, uh, 375 watts as we do see here, is starting to gap these riders here. Uh, 168 beats per minute, uh, so he's beating right up into uh, what his uh, maximum is. Um, so it's you know pretty hard effort that he's putting out here. Now this is pretty awesome. This is actually a really awesome game. Like um, you know we all love it on here. This is why we bring this to you. Um, it gives us great effort, uh, and the community uh, in this place is absolutely amazing. Uh, so Jeffrey Creel currently um, the only rider at the front of this race here who is on a, a real power from a power meter or smart trainer. The three riders just ahead of him are T Noda, L Brody, and also um, Ardorna are currently um, on Z Power, which is a kind of a, a, an easier way, a more accessible way to the masses to uh, get using this. Uh, and that is what he's, he, he's going to be on. So we can get a good view here of what he's going to be doing. This is a sort of uh, effort. They're going to be climbing right up here. And this is the tower where these riders are. Um, they're out um, on this course here. And uh, uh, they've got to go around this tower here, which is near the top. And then they'll head back down. Uh, so Wahoo today is the uh, sponsor of this event. But there are many other options out there you can actually get. Uh, whilst you're uh, uh, looking to get entry into Zwift, um, to ride on Zwift and indoor training, um, if you head out to any good uh, bicycle uh, website, you can actually get information um, from uh, trainers such as Wahoo, uh, Cyclops, uh, Tax, Elite, all produce some great trainers, are very different, dif very in difference in uh, budgets levels and to make it very accessible. Uh, so it's something you can definitely hop on, get a bit of access here as we do see Jeffrey hitting into the 12, 13% here. He's going to be really feeling that effort as we do see his heartbeat is at 170 kilometers. 170 kilometers, wow, that's a really fast heart rate. 170 beats per minute. 
uh, as he's riding out in his Swift Racer, the Wahoo Tour de Oz. So, Jeffrey, let's go see what's going to happen here. So he's got a big gap, you know, and we have seen if these riders are coming up here um, in more of a... Um, more of a group, we do actually see some people throwing a bit of a tactics into the race. So as we do see this bike that Jeffrey's on here is actually the Zwift Concept bike. But there are other bikes out there which you can get, which give you different advantages in climbing, flats, sprints. And we've also got the time trial bike, which although you cannot draft off, you cannot draft off any other riders when you're on the time trial bike. It is one of the fastest bikes on the downhill, probably the fastest bike. And we do actually see some riders when they come up to this uh, top of this tower here. If they're in a group, they will sometimes pull over. They will hop onto the time trial bike and then they will head down the descent. As we just see 170 beats per minute coming out of Jeffrey Creel here. Sitting at 100, 340 watts around average there. He's really putting in some huge effort here. He'll be sweating. He looks very calm and collected on the bike here. The body not rocking over at all. But he will be there putting in some really hard effort for sure. As we do see him throwing up. There we go. He's got the feather power up everyone. The feather weight power up is going to drop him. It basically give him an additional one watt per kilogram to get up the climb. And that may not seem one watt per kilogram. What is that? Well, basically, this watts that Jeffrey's putting out here, 300 watts. And that is basically divided by his weight. That is watts per kilogram, which affects you on the climbs. And he's going to gain a whole another one of those. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot for a lot of people. That, uh, a one can basically... Uh, you know, for a short amount of time can be uh, enough to give you the win as well. But yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Mr. Two Nice Words, he could be uh, passing out there possibly uh, with that effort he's going to be putting on. But we will see that heart rate drop right down there. As we do see, Jeffrey has reached the top of the climb here. We'll get a nice little view of him before he uh, heads down the descent. But we do see a rider coming back up to him here, Aaron Dunn. Aaron Dunn, the current leader in the uh, East uh, E-Crit series. He is... Um, he is really, he's managed to catch right up to here as we do see that effort that he has put in right there. Oh wow, he's going to really catch up. And it'd be interesting to see whether Aaron Dunn, a bit of a heavier rider compared to Jeffrey Kuhl, I do believe. So although they you know on the climb that is that might affect him a little bit, he's going to be get a little bit of advantage through uh, our old favourite Newton's gravity to head down that. Maybe he's got a little bit of a uh, drafting power, but we do see him cresting over the top here. 20 seconds is a gap down to Jeffrey Kuhl. We do see how big that gap suddenly hits out. Before we head down the sense, and now we're going to see Jeffrey Kuhl. Let's have a look at some speed he's going to be hitting as he does get to a negative 9% gradient, 54, 56 kilometers per hour. We'll, we'll lock onto him here as we do see those legs spinning really fast here. What do you guys think? There's an achievement for getting 100 kilometers per hour. Might get that. He doesn't look like he's going quite hard enough. I think he'll get out to the top about 85 uh, as we all drop back, and we do see that gap too. Aaron Dunn now starting to go right out. So what's Aaron Dunn doing? We've cut, we've, he's dropped right off the course here, guys. There he is, Aaron Dunn. Oh, Jones. He's on that wheel. And this could work out well for these two riders. If they can work together, share a bit of a draft out on the downhill, they could possibly catch up to um, Jeffrey Creel here. As we do see, that here we go. He's into the arrow tuck. That's what we like to see. So uh, O'Brien is in that arrow tuck as he does come down the ascent. And we will see them now come up to this little bit of a peak here. And they're going to put in some more effort. So we need, want to see some power-ups from these guys. These guys are going to be sharing the draft as they do head down that course to try and catch up to the riders. And that is something that we will hopefully see as you do get a benefit from a draft. And this is where we all sort of see it break away. There was a group of four riders out on course. And on the, and then on the climb, the riders started to drop off one by one. And if you do see the riders here, when they're coming down, here we go. The riders are on. They're onto the flat section. And now we're going to go up to this uh, little bit of a uh, King OM banner here before we do head down the descent. 23 seconds is the gap out to these riders. We do see them both putting in the effort together. They're going to be showing the draft. They're going to be hopping into each other's uh, rear wheel to get that a little bit of a uh, rest bite uh, before they head down. Purple Egg Zombie 96, Freedom 11. Here we go. They're going to head down into this uh, into this uh, descent here. And these riders have got it's about 10 kilometer descent to the uh, base of the climb. As uh, we do see that gap of 25 seconds, 26 seconds going out and done. We're not going to be able to see these riders in the horizon line at all as he's got a huge gap to these, these two riders here. We'll see, we, might, we might be able to just see them if we get overhead. Possibly not. No, we're losing. Totally got no view there of riders as we do head into the mountains for a second there. But here we go. 24 seconds. It looks like at the moment, 
if Jeffrey Kill can keep this pace up, and we have seen it before on the descent, we've seen it from the likes of Kim Little when he's uh, donned the uh, TT bike. He has gone all the way down from that top tower all the way down to the bottom and held that gap. But these two riders working together, they're now 13 seconds back. They are going to catch up to everyone. They're really going to get this, they're closing this gap down. 10 seconds, Aaron Dunn pushing into the orange numbers, which means he is pushing way above his FTP and his critical powers. And we do see this gap closing right now. Let's look at overhead shot. Here we go, the gap there to Jeffrey Creel. These riders are there closing right on to his wheel. As we do see there, there we go, the wheels coming behind. And these guys are all coming back together now. So that is a, wow, these guys are all coming back together. And that's it over for Jeffrey Creel. We thought he might be able to keep that, but he's probably thought rather than pushing his legs really hard all the way down the scent, they could catch him on the, on the basically the climb up towards the S's. Um, so maybe it's a little bit of a good decision there Jeffrey can make to uh, take it easy. But they've got a good 50 seconds, almost a full minute back to M. Polly, B. Hickson. M. Tolhurst and uh, S. Slug there pushing into the orange numbers to get onto that group. So we'll sit with these riders as well as we do see them coming right up into the mountains. We'll get a bit of more view. So there we go, guys. They're coming down from the tower, which is right up here. They're swinging down here. Then we're going over these little bit of undulations, which we can see coming up here. We can see the little bit of undulations there. It's like a bit of a roller coaster. Heading over the Rickety Bridge, and then they'll head down through the Avalanche Tunnel before heading down the descent through the German village, across the Cable Stay Bridge, and through the Underwater Tunnel before heading back to the main Watopia Island and heading down to the start-finish line where they'll be finishing off this race. 31.6 kilometers, 677 meters, and that is where the riders will be going to be heading out, and hopefully you'll see a sprint between these, these riders right here. So let's have a little look back at what that happened there. We did see Jeffrey Kiel. He did break up away from his riders up the tower. And then they all came down. He got that first descent. That hit down that climb together. He broke away from them all. And let's have a little look at that there as we do see what happens. Jeff Aaron Dunn here and O Jones were chasing after Jeffrey Kiel, who was a full 20 seconds ahead of these two riders. Uh, and then as they came along, they basically managed to bridge that gap and bring them right down together and got that gap down to zero seconds. And now these riders are all working together. But right now, they are still actually putting the pain back onto Jeffrey Kiel. They're not pushing him easy at all. They're pushing him really hard out there on the course. These three riders all together, sticking in, sit on each other's wheels. We do see two Zwift concept bikes there. And we also see, uh, I think it is uh, coming from uh, O. Jones. He is on the uh, Trek Mado and uh, a, ride, uh, a bike that you unlock at level 20. So, um, Great to see uh, some riders there unlocking levels. And that's another thing you can actually do out in Zwift. It's not just riding. It's not just racing. You can do workouts. You can unlock levels for achievements, but for sitting in and putting in the efforts of climbing and also good distance as well. Um, uh, and some people have put in some absolutely huge distances out on Zwift. Uh, some uh, over like some hundreds and hundreds of hours and thousands and thousands of kilometers. Uh, Frank Garcia recently posted in uh, one of the uh, Facebook uh, groups for Zwift uh, saying how far he actually had gone and uh, how he feels about Zwift. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's definitely some huge efforts out there. I think uh, Nathan Guerra is possibly uh, one of the leaders out there as well um, in terms of distance. So, let's have a think about what's going to go on here. So, we've got three riders coming out of... Uh, we've got O. Jones coming out of New Zealand. We've got Jeffrey Cook coming out of Australia. And we've got Aaron Dunn coming out of Australia from Tasmania in the WP Taz. None of these riders have any allegiances together. Um, and they're basically uh, going to have to see what they can want to do to keep um, to keep the race up together as they are heading down through the Winter Wonderland um, and they're going to be pushing really hard through here. Let's see what's going to happen. We're going to see, maybe we're going to see a bit of a, a sprint effort from these guys all together or maybe we're going to see a, a bit of a, uh, uh, someone take a bit of an early attack down one of the descents. It's something that you have not quite seen out of. I've never really seen someone push really hard down one of the, the uh, descents. If I was going to give it a shot myself, I'll give it a shot when we come down after the castle and then we hit that, basically that bit of a ramp all the way down through the German village, uh, which uh, going down for it is really good fun. Going up it, it is a slog. It keeps on going. Um, I've got Rob Nimhead. Are you showing the front of the race or is a 58-year-old Japanese guy to the note who rode away from um he's putting in some effort that's what that's for sure um rob is putting in effort out there um on course um uh, so he, he, we're going to stick with these guys these guys are on uh, the power and um, basically uh, verified parameters and uh, well the they're on power meters and, and smart trainers uh, that are giving us uh, more accurate efforts. So we're going to stick with these guys here. And uh, also uh, riders who we do see a lot out in the uh, e series. So it's something that we want to kind of give a bit of focus on. 
uh, as well. So we're keeping these guys who are the top, um, the top uh, f- uh, racers out in this race who are on their power sources. Uh, so these three riders are all together at the moment. So we do see them now get a little bit of a uh, flat section here before they head down to the the uh, village. But we'll we'll jump a little bit further ahead as you can see how far ahead these riders are. Um, T Noda is already on that descent right there. Um, so huge effort uh, going on there. Really really far. We will head back up to um, the riders of Aaron Dunn and O Jones. We'll do some beautiful view there as uh, the sun is starting to rise out on course. So. Hey, how's it going? Obsolete Biscuit 50, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, this is Zwift, a uh, bit of a uh, online racing uh, from Zwift at the moment. These people, uh, these uh, riders, Aaron Dunn, Jeffrey Kill, and uh, O Jones are putting out real efforts on real bikes. Uh, why not Why not just go ride a bike in real life? These riders are riding bikes in real life, but they're riding in the same spot at the moment. Uh, and there's uh, nothing uh, wrong with doing that. Uh, sometimes you've got family. Uh, where you uh, can't get away uh, just as easy to go ride out on long rides. Uh, sometimes the, the best type of efforts you can actually do in training uh, is by doing indoor riding. Um, they might be on recovery from injuries. Uh, the likes of uh, Mark Cavendish, uh, Mark Cavendish uh, the one of the top British uh, sprinters, uh, one of the top uh, Brit- uh, sprinters in the world, um, is actually riding out on uh, Swift uh, currently the past week to recover from a crash he actually had in the Tour de France. Uh, he, he can't go out riding, unfortunately, because he's uh, um, got a broken bone. Uh, and it's a great way to recover, to recoup, to lose weight, uh, to get fitter uh, for the masses. Um, some people uh, like Sonia Weidman, if you stick around, we'll show you the start on your Weidman's Swift Academy um, video uh, from her last year. She actually uh, didn't do much riding at all. It was quite, uh, I think she said she was actually a little bit uh, fearful of um, going outside riding with her vehicles. So it's a safe way you can actually get access uh, build up the power you need and then actually go riding, uh, do triathlons, do uh, some races. Um, so yeah, great source of uh, of getting some exercise, uh, some uh, indoor fitness. Uh, and these riders here, um, no, 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 so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not just a video game. Yeah, these riders are out here to put out real efforts. Um, uh, I've shown this a few times um, to give you a bit of an idea of what these riders are doing. Um, so like here, I'll bring this over just on this scene uh, just now. Uh, so these riders are using uh, something like this. So uh, they've got uh, you see the rear wheel from the bike there. Uh, they'll take that off and pop that on that uh, this other little thing uh, just here, and uh, then that'll be see so the, when they pedal their pedal their cranks uh, and that'll spin it, and then they'll be getting on and putting some real effort in uh, to ride down uh, ride it down the mountain like they are here and uh, racing, um, and that's what these uh, riders are doing. As we do see Jeffrey Kuehl, Aaron Dunn. And also, O Jones is still putting in all this effort here. This has been a pretty fast race for these these uh, these three riders here. Thirty eight minutes so far, twenty one point nine kilometers. They've still got ten kilometers just to go, and that will see them go over this bridge here, down through the underwater tunnel, and back down into the main Watopia Island before heading across the Essays onto the finish line. I'm just going to grab a bit of water here, guys, if you just don't mind, just for just a moment. So we will focus on these uh, three A-, A riders just now, and then we will head our way back down the pack. We've got two minutes back down to B. Hicks and M. Polly, uh, and then M. T- Tolhurst at three minutes down, and we will maybe try and get some uh, C riders uh, to come into uh, the broadcast as well to see how they're getting on. Uh, these riders are sticking together. Um, I wonder what sort of tactics they will be uh, putting out here to kind of get this win because they're all sitting together. I think it might go down to a... Uh, a sprint? Um, no, no, no. Real to real to near. It's no issues at all. Yeah, it's it's. I know. It's, and I understand you come in here. You see this out here. It's like okay, these guys are just uh, watching it, and this guy is just uh, talking about it. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, I'll show, I'll bring up a little thing just on the right hand side in a moment. So you can actually see what these sort of uh, efforts are putting on. I just need to mute it just now. Here we go. Um, there we go. We got it. Okay, so you can probably see on the on the right hand side here. I'll give you a little bit of explanation on what is going on. Um, so you can see here, this is the sort of thing you're seeing, you're seeing riders out there, and you see that someone is sat on a bike there watching a screen, and then that is uh, putting in the effort, you can see the sort of uh, trainer, I'll bring it up to a full screen, why not, and you can all see it there. Uh, this is the sort of effort to put out, so they're on a indoor trainer, pedaling out, putting some real effort, and then that converts the power through a wireless signal to the computer, uh, or the uh, iOS uh, device, and then they can actually come out here, race, train, 
Uh, if you go up a hill, it will uh, replicate the effort, um, make it harder to pedal. If you go down a hill, it will make it easier. If they get behind someone's wheel and they draft, it will also get a little bit easier as well. Uh, so it all communicates together. Uh, great little system. You see some workout modes just there, uh, which can give you some uh, effort, some uh, very structured, uh, built-in structured training, uh, and how you can get fit, how you get stronger, how you can like lose some weight. Uh, all the things that you're looking for if you want to kind of get better at cycling uh, and things you want to target and uh, that is what uh, these riders are actually doing right now they're going to be out putting those efforts on the bike so uh, these these are uh, these three riders here eric come in uh the female rider there they, they look a little bit um they're not putting the efforts that these riders are putting in going over the mountain uh but yeah these riders will be sweating as we did see jeffrey keel pushing into 170 beats per minute uh that is a huge huge effort from uh, jeffrey keel the rider coming out of uh, coming out of um, uh, Australia here as well. So three. Also, we've got about uh, it's about eight kilometers, six kilometers still to go in this race. Uh, if anyone's got any predictions, uh, you can send it through to us. Um, uh, let us know what, how you think is going to happen. If any of you are new to this, uh, you want to know a bit more about it, let us know. We can maybe stick around for a little bit after the race is finished and give you some more information. Uh, maybe show you how the bike gets hooked up as well and a few of the little bits and bobs as we do stick with these uh, riders here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll just head back and show you a little bit more. Uh, we're talking about Sonia Weidman and the efforts she put in uh, out in real life. Uh, we'll show you that and we'll keep an eye on these riders. Uh, if we miss anything, we'll bring you that action as well. And we'll show you what is actually going on in the community at the moment with the uh, Zwift Academy. Last year, Zwift Academy opened its doors, launching a groundbreaking worldwide talent search to find the next pro rider for Canyon SRAM racing. The competition exceeded all expectation. Over 1,200 women from 51 countries signed up to take the challenge in Zwift. In a truly grand finale, on the island of Majorca at Canyon Sram's training camp, Leah Thorvalson of Little Rock, Arkansas, was crowned 2016 Zwift Academy champion and the newest member of Canyon Sram Racing. This year, it could be you. Oh wow, I could have a shot at a pro contract, but it's for anyone. It's a huge step forward in your own fitness, and so it's, it's not all just about the one person who's going to get a pro contract. It's a win for everyone who's involved. Zwift Academy is this great program where Zwift is trying to get the women more involved. It's just this huge, to me, a great community. There's women coming up going, I get how this could fit into my life. What I think is so nice about Swift Academy, I really think that it was um, inspiring lots of women to, to take part in this adventure. Maybe they've gone far beyond their own expectations. How far I got in Swift, um, there were 1,200 females that joined and um, there were 100 females that finished Swift and I can't believe I, I was one of them. Yes, it's hard. Come on, you can do it, you know, just do your best. Because it's not just the physical side, it's the determination and to boost your confidence in anything else you do, not just cycling. Find out how strong you really are. Find new friends from around the world. Find out if you have what it takes to go pro. Do not wait, just follow your dreams. Be the best cyclist you can be. Head over to academy.zwift.com to find out more and sign up today. react sorry guys there we go so i was just saying uh, thanks for the problem there about the mic so the two riders basically uh, they were now they're sitting together but they just attacked out of that uh, climb there um so huge huge effort there from o jones uh, i'll just bring that again 
uh, in a moment to see you guys a little bit of what happened there. So now together, but just as we came up that incline, uh, we did see O Jones was sitting on the wheel, Jeffrey Kill and Aaron Dunn, and we did see just a little flash there, and there came out of his pocket the drafting power up, a little bit of RNG in game. He sat on that wheel, got with an effort, and used it as a boost to get up out of the climb, right up that ramp into the dust clouds, and he, when he got up into the dust clouds, we did see it happening again. Um, and then he did put in that effort, he got that break, and right now, it's, it's all happening, it's all kicking off, we're going to have to get right back to the actual racing action, as we do see another attack just happening, just then, coming out of um, O Jones as well, uh, here we go, so the attack happened uh, just again, coming out of here, he's sat there, on the wheel, all nice and easy, and there he goes, O Jones pushing to those orange numbers, right up hard, away from Aaron Dunn, after Aaron Dunn kicking in those orange numbers, Jeffrey Kill kicking in those orange numbers, pushing it past those power curve, those big numbers, critical powers that they've got, right up there, getting the gap, as we do see the riders, they are now back together, those riders, so they're all sitting together, as we, they are going again, here we go, now all the action is happening everyone, all the action is happening, as we do see, Aaron Dunn pushing off the front. Jeffrey Creel sitting on that wheel just there. He's going to go by. He's going to go right by him, everyone. He's got a gap. It's down to one second gap. That's not much. They're going to let him come back. I think they're going to let him come back a little bit as we do see them fighting it out on course. These two riders together. Now, when they get on the wheel, are they going to attack straight away? Are they going to push right past him? Is, is Jeffrey Creel going to go right, sit on the wheel now, and then push it again? We haven't, we've seen a power up from. Oh, Jones, so we know he has used one there. We also saw one coming out of uh, earlier on, the featherweights from Jeffrey Cool, but hopefully he picked up one on the uh, KOM banner and get some experience points. So we think that uh, Aaron Dunn and Jeffrey Kill might be sitting on a bit of RNG look on their side there, maybe with a little bit of a uh, featherweight power-up as we do turn into the S's in just a few hundred metres. Uh, or maybe they've got a little, and they can use a featherweight up that 6% gradient up into the S's, or maybe they've got a little bit of an aero booster, a little aero turtle shell, red turtle shell helmet to push them up into that climb. As you see, the riders now sitting quite nicely together. We'll look up to Aaron Dunn, sitting at 160 beats per minute. See what these guys are all sitting at 160, 171. O Jones looks like he is suffering 171 beats per minute. Jeffrey Kill down to 162, so he's still, still know he's got 10 beats to work with there. Um, so. All them together. So uh, the thing, the next tag could possibly be as we um, head into the uh, S's and up that climb here. So um, huge, huge efforts by these guys attacking again and again. Uh, Arctic Knight, thanks very much for the prompt there about the mic uh, muted. Uh, I got a bit excited uh, seeing those guys attacking. Now we forgot to unmute that and let you know what's going to happen as we are passing by the uh, observatory waterfall into the Italian village just now. And um, so, and they're going to swing right. So, I'm not going to turn left into the. Uh, not going to turn left down to the volcano. They're swinging right onto the uh, sprint course. Uh, Yobi Bomb. We are playing. Um, we're not playing anything. I mean, we are actually watching these actual riders out there in the real world racing on indoor bikes, powering these avatars here out on Zwift. Uh, so, some huge efforts by all these riders. Um, absolutely crazy efforts. Uh, so they're pushing into, uh, they've just seen some attacks, they've been on the mountain, they have done uh, 300, uh, 300 done, uh, 677 meters of climbing, uh, and they have currently uh, at 29.4 kilometers with uh, 2 kilometers still to go. Uh, and uh, they're going now 200 meters before the start of the sprint banner, I don't think we'll see any uh, sprint attempts from here. Um, and then they're going to be pushing into the S's and climbing up into the little bit of undulations before the sprint finale out on course. So these three riders together, two on the Tron bike, one on the Trek Madone, the yellow Trek Madone. All sitting together nicely, all starting to recover. Aaron Dunn down to 135 beats per minute, really easily recovered there. 153 from O Jones, Jeffrey Kill, 154 beats per minute. Uh, these guys also need to recover. So, what is it, white, um, white boy? It is a um, is the same energy used as yet? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. You know what? Normal spike. It's probably harder energy. Uh, people do say that an hour race, uh, an hour riding on Zwift is uh, the same as a uh, two hours riding outdoors. So, uh, probably the same sort of energy because you're not stopping all the time. Uh, putting here we go. We see O Jones putting into those orange numbers, trying to make that gap. As we do see Aaron Dunn kick into the orange numbers. Let's see the heart rate shoots right up. Jeffrey Kill reacting. He's got 100. He's got 20 beats still to manage there. He's they've really been to slog out, uh, Jeffrey Cool quite a lot again and again. They've been hitting him harder and harder, attacking him. As you see, they've now got a one second, a two second gap over Jeffrey Cool here. It could be all over Jeffrey Kills. We do see Aaron Dunn pushing once again off the front there. 
Um, some really hard efforts coming out of these guys. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, it is. Uh, so, why Bob? It is a, a virtual cycling game for people on indoor bike trainers using a. Uh, uh, they sit on the bike, so you're actually pedaling these pedals at the moment. So these heart rates are the real heart rates you're seeing as Jeffrey Kill has come back to that group. As we do see Aaron Dunn again pushing us as orange numbers. Huge effort, so they're going to go again and again. We thought they might sit on each other's wheels and just take a little easy pace before we uh, get to the uh, final sprints, but no, they are still attacking each other up and over these undulations of the S's. Uh, again and again, so these riders really, really putting in some huge, huge efforts here. And a huge kudos to all these uh, riders out there riding on Zwift. Uh, that is what we are uh, watching at the moment, these riders out there. Aaron Dunn coming out of uh, Tasmania and the Wolfpack Tasmania team. O Jones coming out of New Zealand and Jeffrey Keel coming out of Australia, riding for Vision Cycling. Huge efforts. Jeffrey Keel recently was racing out in London. He got invited over to... I thought the rider come back there, but Jeffrey Cool recently riding out in uh, London uh, in the CVR World Cup. Um, placed, um, I think he placed their third place in the end in that race. Um, huge, huge efforts by them on the uh, um, riding in that uh, real world, real place event uh, in London in Shoreditch. So Aaron Dunn off the front. He's got a little bit of a gap here over the riders. He's going to maintain this gap. These, are, these two riders are, are sitting and we've gone back. We flew back to the course there, guys. What is going here? We need to get out of this event quickly before we lose everything. We just dropped right out of course there. And here we go. We're going to get back. We're going to get back, everyone. We're going to do a little bit of a U-turn. We're going to get back to the finish because this should not be happening whatsoever. Okay, here we go. We'll go back. Uh, back again. Back again. We're going to fire the riders. Just flew back all of a sudden. Here we go. Okay, we're looking for some Australian riders. Here we go. O Jones, we see the orange numbers. That's O Jones. Here we go, everyone. O Jones, here we go. The group, we've got them just in time. O Jones has broken away from Jeffrey Creel, and it looks like Aaron Dunn is just off the front there, and these riders are all together off the front. Here we go. Aaron Dunn, of a drafting power up coming back from the two riders behind right now. And there we go. We have it. We have the aero power up there coming from Aaron Dunn, pushing to 10 watts per kilograms. O Jones, two seconds behind him. They're not going to catch up to these riders here. It's like Aaron Dunn has got the W in this race right now. Three seconds though, Jeffrey Creel and the rest of the riders. And they're coming up to that line as we will flick back to see the gap. Four seconds, 11 watts per kilograms. And that is the race over for these riders. That is your one, two, three. First place, Aaron Dunn. Second place, Jeffrey Creel. And third place to Ollie Jones. Huge, huge efforts for those guys there. And we are very lucky to find that finish there of those riders. What we'll do now, there's three riders, huge congratulations to those ones. We do see some more coming in from the uh, f stage four of the Tour de Oz. Uh, Chris Jones, so the riders control, uh, not at the moment, uh, they're just pedaling at the moment, so, which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a lot to do, put, just pedaling, um, actually, the efforts they're putting in. Uh, there are some, uh, there's been some, uh, there's a Zwiftcast podcast, uh, and they had some interviews with uh, some of the uh, staff, uh, the creators of uh, Zwift, and they are, there's some rumors uh some slight confirmations coming out of those sources that there may be some sort of steering coming in the future. So right now, all these riders are kind of stuck on the track, uh, but get stuck behind, uh, uh, stuck behind other wheels, uh, and um, then they're going to basically be able to maybe steer away from those. Um, is what we sort of hear. Maybe there'll be some mountain biking or something else, some 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 for special function. Uh, Roly poly people. Uh, this is Zwift. Uh, Zwift.com. If you head that, if you head to Zwift.com, you can see what this is. It's a uh, virtual online cycling um, a game uh, where you can uh, cycle in real life, put in real efforts, and it gets converted into a game. So right now we have got B Hickson. This is the uh, chasing group. B Hicks, uh, M Poly, B Hickson, uh, D Adams, all put in real world efforts to actually power these avatars by pedaling 160, 177 uh, beats per minute coming from M Poly, B Hickson. Not got a heart rate monitor, but 187 there coming from S. Ikeby coming out of Japan as well. They're all racing against each other in this uh, Tour de Oz uh, stage four race. Uh, Jay Bester, huge effort there. Still pushing it as well, uh, eight watts per kilogram um, over the finish line. Now we'll head our way back up the mountain and see if we can find some of those uh, sea riders. Uh, we'll soon find uh, the, <laughs> the, the lead rider of the... Uh, of the uh, Tour de Oz Stage 4 in the C category at the moment. So we'll see where they last are sitting. Uh, looks like we've got uh, quite a few off the front there. Let's go down to see if we can find C. Smith TDRs looking for a rider. Coming out of Australia, funnily enough, in the um, Tour de Oz. So we'll see if we can find C. Smith there. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeff Rooney here, Team Experimental. 
coming in for the finish here. We've always given him a ride on, but huge effort there from Jeff Rooney. Great to see him out there riding for Team Experimental in this race. We do see Jay O'Brien here popping the featherweight power up to get a little bit of a gap with his riders. Uh, and here we've got the three riders all together, and we're going to head back. Let's see if we can find that sea rider out there on courses. We have left the event now. Uh, looking for a C. Smith. He'll be at the front of the race for the C category. So, let's give you guys a little bit of a recap of what happened just at the end there of the race. Uh, a little bit of a replay of that finish there from the riders. So we did see Aaron Dunn popping the uh, aero power up to uh, get a more aerodynamic uh, uh, ride into the finish. He had a huge gap of uh, two, two, two to three seconds. That's a pretty big gap on the sprint of uh, over O Jones and Jeffrey Creel there. So a great finish by uh, Aaron Dunn there, uh, the current leader in the uh, Australia Kiss E Crit series on the East. Uh, someone that we'll hopefully see out racing in real life uh, in the future. Um, so huge, huge efforts there uh, coming from those uh, three riders, and it was uh, great to see them all finish uh, together in that, uh, that incredible sprint effort there. Orange numbers popping all over the place. Uh, thanks very much for the host there, uh, Chintzy103. Uh, uh, really appreciate that. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. So, S. Whitsford there finishing up, and it uh, looks like we're not going to be able to find these as we did actually have to leave the events there to get uh, past uh, the little block of being locked into. The uh, here we go, C Smith. There we go. We have got him, C Smith. This, this is a lead group of the uh, the lead group of the C Riders, uh, the second uh, group that is out there. Um, now here we go, C Smith also uh, sitting with H Keys. I saw a little shout out from uh, Michael Bradshaw over on Facebook asking where H Keys was. H Keys is here in this uh, front group at the moment. So we'll give H Keys a ride on. Uh, let's, let's let's find some. Uh, uh, HK's Keiki's, uh, we can't even read it, so late at the moment, it's at 1am where I am at the moment. Let's have a little look at who Keiki's actually is. Carl, Carl Hayes, Carl Hayes, HK's Carl Hayes. I'm getting so confused by his names here. So Carl Hayes, coming off Australia, done five races so far. Currently completed uh, the first and the uh, second uh, to, uh, Wahoo Tour de Oz stage three. Uh, that has been reported by ZwiftPower.com, possibly... Uh, uh, completed some other ones, but we don't have those uh, results uh, just with us at the moment. So, and these uh, four riders now all sitting nicely together um, on the course here, coming through the Italian village before they head up to the sprint. And we will see these uh, riders to the end as the uh, one of the front groups uh, out actually uh, out on course. So I did actually see uh, uh, Tim Sill popping in there to the Facebook um, over uh, coming out of Australia, one of the basically the man behind uh, the ADHR, the Aussie Hum Day ride. So, uh, if you guys ever looking for some Australian uh, fellow to follow out on Zwift in the community, uh, Tim Sill is the one you want to follow. He uh, does some amazing things with that ride. I got the pleasure of riding one, although um, it's usually on when I'm at work uh, a few months back, and it's uh, really enjoyable. Uh, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time, Sydney Time. Uh, check it out. The uh, Aussie Hump Day ride, the biggest, uh, I, think it's, I think it's safe to say that is the biggest uh, group ride out on Zwift at the moment. Uh, Jay Jolly Coles, I am actually commentating at the moment, uh, commentating on these uh, riders who are putting their efforts on their bikes in real life at the moment. You will see we are watching uh, Carl Hayes uh, at the moment, uh, putting 270 watts, 162 beats per minute is the effort he is feeling. Um, out coming out of Australia, currently in this front group of four riders uh, with uh, C Duncan, S Jones, and also uh, it looks like uh, C Smith uh, from uh, riding out in the C category. So these riders here, and this is where we might see a bit of attack here coming out of uh, Cole Hayes putting in a bit of an effort here. Is he going to make a bit of a gap over his riders? 500 watts at a moment. He is really putting in that effort there, attacking over the S's. So this could be a winning moment. So that is a huge effort that he put in there. To get a gap, and we do see right behind him, Team Type One. There we go. C Smith putting in a featherweight power up to catch up to these riders, dropping a whole, uh, adding a whole watt per kilogram to his effort right there, trying to catch up to the group. But it looks like this uh, Carl Hell has actually put in an effort that has split that group right up. And these guys are maybe going to let it come together a little bit before they head into the little sprint section for the efforts. As we do see S Jones there, just in nice and easy. Few little, let's look at that back pocket. See how many ride ons he's got. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six ride ons. And then we'll just, let's give a little more, let's give one more ride on to uh, S Jones there to let him know that he is uh, getting some support. There we go, dropping down the ride on. 
Let's see that go into his pocket right there. There we go. I think it drops in just there. I think that drops in just there. So there we go. And Carl Hayes as well has given him the right on because some huge going one, going one already. Some huge efforts coming in there from Carl Hayes. And this was the moment that group got split up, everyone. Coming into the S's, the riders did come up. Uh, we've lost that replay just there. Let's, there we go. Here we go. So coming into the efforts, Carl Hayes did put the hammer down, pushing into 550 uh, watts. Up into the 6 watts, we're clearly going to break away from that group. And that was the moment that this uh, group was uh, made. As we do see, he's still putting in those efforts again and again, trying to break away from S. Jones, coming from Team Type 1. A team actually within Zwift, as we made to raise awareness of team of uh, Type 1 diabetes. And also, uh, riders who want to ride together who may have Type 1 diabetes. Um, there's a number of charity teams out there, as like uh, Team Type 1, one of, one, uh, one of the largest... Uh, uh, team uh, clubs out on Zwift is actually a uh, WBR World Bicycle Relief, um, a, a great cause uh, raising money to uh, put uh, children, um, women, families um, on um, on bikes over in uh, countries that are less fortunate than uh, the ones we are in, um, so they can get to uh, school, they can get to shops, they can get to jobs, they can get an education and uh, better their lives uh, through. Uh, the world of uh, bicycles as we do see k hayes pushing down now taking it easy 2.83 watts per kilogram before he's sitting on the wheel of s jones right there from team type one so these two riders taking it nice and easy together taking a little bit of a gap a little bit of a gap forming there from s jones sitting on that wheel there as we do see that the finish line is coming up as the uh the moon sets on the land of watopia as we do see a few ships in the background there, we're coming up to 400 meters to the finish line right here. 300 meters, and we do see car here. Here we go. Here come the power ups. The power ups are going out now from the rise. We've got Featherweight coming from S. Jones from Team Type 1, and Carl Hayes is actually putting in there a huge 8.2 watts per kilogram of Featherweight power up. And S. Jones, Carl Hayes has got that. Here we go. Here we go. Who's going to get it, everyone? And it looks like, oh, right on the line. It looks like S. Jones just got that right there. And we'll play that back there just to double check that. How's it going, Tim? Over at, he's, he's all over the place, Tim. He's over at Facebook. He's over at Mixer. And here we go. Let's have a look at that right there. Let's see if we can bring in this uh, playback and pause the moment when that happens. As we do see, here we go. The effort went. And it's this moment here. You see the riders come right back together. There. So it looks like we did actually have... Uh, it was uh, S. Jones over the line first, followed by uh, Scott Hayes there. That is the moment there we saw it all happen. There, so it is uh, S. Jones who crossed the line first. Just not quite enough. Uh, S. Jones did have the best power up there with a drafting power up, dropped behind his uh, wheel, and then pushed through to get to that finish line there. That was a great finish from those riders right there. Okay, so let's uh, drop back and then we'll finish off this broadcast. If anyone's got any questions about what's going on, let's have a look at um, the comments so far. A lot of comments about what we are playing at the moment. We are actually playing, uh, I'm actually commentating on a race, uh, commentating on a race of uh, Zwift at the moment. Um, it is uh, Zwift.com uh, um, Zwift is uh, where you can download it uh, for PC and for Mac. Uh, but if you also want to, you can get it on iOS. There is also talk about it is uh, soon going to be coming out for uh, Android, and there's also a beta at the moment uh, of the um, of the uh, Apple TV version as well. Uh, I know a lot of you will be out there uh, watching um, over on uh, Xbox, possibly on Xbox Live, uh, as we are broadcasting through Mix on Xbox Live at the moment. Uh, it's not quite out for Xbox yet. I'm not sure there's any plans for it to come out to Xbox, but you know, who knows what could happen in the future? Uh, it would be great to see uh, these sort of. Uh, games out there for sure okay so if anyone's got any questions uh, i can show you a bit of a setup show you how it works uh, or we can end it right there i can get myself some uh, sleep it's currently one o'clock in the morning uh, but i do thank you all very much as it looks like i've got 800 people out watching over on mixer at the moment so a huge welcome to all you there out there uh, we've got some more broadcasts coming up uh, in just uh, three hours time we have got uh, zeus Kana, ashley bergstrom doing her um uh uh, basically, I'll bring up a little bit of info about Ashley just uh, in a moment. But Ashley is going to be doing her drop lactic acid uh, ride out on uh, Zwift uh, that she does every. Um, uh, here we go. Every uh, every week, uh, she does a ride out on Zwift. It's Ashley uh, Zuskana. Uh, she does a ride. It's a really fun uh, social ride. Uh, 
that she does every single week, um, and she streams over her, at her channel on um, on Beam, I think it is actually, or Mixer, it's actually mixer.com slash Zuzkana. You can check out some of her rides there uh, from the past uh, few uh, few days if you want to watch some VODs and see what she gets up to. But you can join her in just three hours' time and find a little bit more about uh, what you can actually do on Zwift. She usually does a bit of a workout, which is uh, great to see as well. Uh, but so we can check out what's so far. We'll give you a little bit of a recap of the results as well. Is this game any good? LJV69. Um, this game, uh, Zwift, this platform is absolutely it's amazing. Um, it can do absolutely wonders for you, uh, for anyone. Uh, getting fit, uh, getting stronger, um, getting uh, getting you know like some safer cycling efforts in. Um, you can also do a bit of running out on Zwift as well. If you like a bit of running, there's a, there's a sneaky shortcut you can actually get access to uh, running um, as well. Um, so you can uh, it's a great uh, fitness platform uh, that hopefully we'll see grow and grow in the future. Um, and maybe some other disciplines in there as well. Uh, we have heard some uh, some things in our podcasts about, um, about uh, possibly rowing as well. That's something that we've heard about in our podcasts. Um, but yeah, you can do uh, you can do workouts, you can do group rides, uh, you can just go for free roaming. One of my favourite things when I first started out on Zwift was just uh, roaming around on uh, Watopia Island, uh, getting in some uh, some nice, uh, easy uh, riding around, um, so you can get a little bit of view of uh, Watopia right now for you. And you can actually see uh, what I'm talking about, what the sort of uh, world is like. Uh, so you've got like yeah, a bit of a uh, tunnel here. Um, can't really do much in this view here, but um, yeah, tunnel got some hills up here, got some mountains over here, got some more underwater stuff. You can just go for a little explore, which is something that I uh, used to love doing myself before I got into any group rides. Uh, but some huge group rides that you can do as well, some missions to unlock things as well. You can uh, unlock special jerseys. Um, like we do actually have the um, currently the June mission is uh, the um, it is the Rafa Rising mission, which is uh, happening July every month out on Swift. There is a, uh, a mission that happens, and this one is a Rap Horizon mission that you got to do the Three Sisters course out on uh, Zwift on Watopia. If you complete it, you get entered into a draw to uh, win some Rafa cycling kits, which is a really high premium uh, kit, great quality. And uh, you can also, um, uh, I think you also unlock a special kit there as well. Um, and uh, there's lots of other opportunities out there. So also um, at the moment, um, there is the uh, start, the run forward to the uh, Zwift Academy, um, the Zwift Academy uh, training, uh, uh, and uh, basically the series uh, where women out on uh, Zwift can actually win a place uh, to ride for a uh, a World Tour Pro team. Uh, so not, you know, not like a club, an actual like World Tour Pro team that goes around the world, uh, cycling in races at the highest level in sport. And uh, one of the uh, uh, women last year was uh, actual uh, uh, Leah Forrester. Last year, um, Zwift who Academy that, opened uh, its doors, launch video here. launching a groundbreaking uh, she actually, uh, worldwide was out there for to find the next pro women. rider for Canyon Tram She actually Tram went racing. there and uh, raced uh, and trained and did workouts out on Zwift and uh, actually won a place uh, in the... Um, I won a place with uh, uh, Canyon Strand Racing for the final um, of uh, with uh, three other riders. So um, that's what uh, she did, and she's now now racing in the Giro Rosa as well. Uh, basically, one of the top races out um, in the Women's World Tour as well. So uh, that will call it at the end of the broadcast. Then we'll uh, ping up this uh, video. You can watch the end of it. Um, thank you all very much for joining today. Um, we'll be back uh, later on in a few hours. Uh, we can watch. The uh, Zwift, um, the Zwift uh, ride with uh, Zuskana, and uh, later on in the week we will have some more races as well. Um, Tuesday we've got uh, the Australian Ecrit E Series uh, kicking off. Uh, there may be a special. Um, hey, how's it going, Average Owl? Yeah, this is uh, it's funky. Yeah, it's a funky game. That's, that's, that's what that emoji means. It means funky, like awesome. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if you stick around um, and, and hang around and watch uh, in three hours time, you can see uh, Zuzkana and then later on in the week we do have some more rides as well. Um, stick around for the uh, uh, Tuesday 10 p.m. Uh, 10 at 10 a.m. Uh, BST 7 p.m. Uh, um, Australian time. You can check out the uh, Australian Ecrit East broadcast, and that is uh, where you will uh, possibly see um, some uh, impressive riding. Uh, uh, happening um, like you know right now we're watching riders uh, the avatars you might see a certain cool rider out there putting in some super efforts uh, to race against uh, the community as well so we'll finish up the broadcast there thank you all very much for checking in today and uh, we look forward to seeing you again on another broadcast
not wait just for when I started on as you can be. Head over to academy.zwift.com to find out more and sign up today. I didn't do any riding outside. I didn't do any competitions. I hardly, you know, I've never been on a road bike outside on the road. And only then once I got the confidence on the turbo trainer that I got some power in my legs and I feel confident on the road bike, then I went outside. Joining the Zwift Academy will get me to do that number of exercises in a certain time for me to be able to then, yeah, I can sign up to do the triathlon. I signed for a few triathlons. I started first duathlon and then I did three local triathlons and you progress because you keep cycling on Zwift and you get better and better so that will reflect in your outside ride. It's like cycling outside but not having to concentrate on the cars, on the wind and the temperature. You controlling that yourself. Sometimes you think you sign for things and then you go, oh, you get bored of it and you never finish things. But I think having the goal of with everyone else to finish something and you see their progress, your progress, just people encourage each other and they go, yes, it's hard, but come on, you can do it, you know, just do your best. Because it's not just the physical side to boost your confidence in anything else you do, not just cycling. You love it. I love it. <laughs> When I started on Zwift, last year, kids were, Zwift they were Academy so opened excited. its. They're coming and watching. What are they doing? Look, she's on the screen. Competition exceeded all.